the balcony that overlooks the back garden. I haven't used it since Laura left. Laura used to brush her hair every night before bed. read the driest science books I can find, but not even that can put me to sleep at night. Most items in here belong to Laura. Stella to touch them. Those are mine. I already had one today. I don't need a towel. in that chair and read, especially on stormy nights. I can't look at that dress without remembering how Laura looked in it. She was radiant in white. That girl is in that room. I wish she'd stay at Oxford. Laura's father found a baby owl while hunting and brought it home. She loved it. It died the night before our wedding day. Put a slight damper on things. One of my ancestors salvaged pieces from a burned cathedral installed them in Dreadhill House. Laura wanted to clean some of it out, but she never got the chance. Spare rooms, I keep them locked. Morning. Tea and toast? 
Want it in the lab as usual? Not yet. I'll eat later. You need to eat, David. Later, Stella. As you say. Simon's business card with his phone number. It's a business card from Inspector Pazer of the Oxford Police Department. He was the investigator on the accident. Have you noticed anything unusual in the house lately? What do you mean? I don't know signs of a break-in or intruder or just the presence of someone else in the house no no <laughs> no of course not you have seen something in the house what is it i never said you're acting strange now that's the pig calling the cow fat i want you to tell me i don't care to talk about it please nana Please tell me. It's important. You only call me Nana when you want your way. Only ever did. Please. All right. It was two days ago. I was making your bed. I saw, well, I thought I saw a woman in the mirror on the dresser. A woman? It was just for a moment. And when I turned, no one was there. It was my imagination playing tricks, and no wonder with how quiet things are in this house. It was Laura, wasn't it? The woman you saw in the bedroom mirror. We're not going to start talking about ghosts in this house. It's not healthy, and it isn't fair to Laura's memory. Do you hear me, David Stiles? All right, all right. Relax. Is that girl lurking about? You mean Sam? She went over to the university. Good. Oh, a fat lot of good that does to my files. So, what do you think of her? Who? Sam, of course. You are a bear this morning. She seems an independent sort to me. A go-getter. <laughs> Ms. Everett certainly has initiative. She's not been any trouble to you, has she? Trouble? That girl has it stamped on her forehead in letters a mile high. Not that I can't deal with a chit like that. Well, I hope she works out. That lab is in a state and a half, and I've got enough to deal with caring for the rest of this old monster. So you've told me. Did the university say anything when they sent her over? Not particularly. Funny, I thought they said they were sending a medical student, but I told them that wasn't necessary and they must have changed their minds. She's not a medical student. You'd think they'd have got that right at least. I know. That's why I think they must have sent someone else. Do you want me to call them? Doesn't matter now. They appear to be stuck with Miss Everett. Don't get too attached to the girl, Stella. I don't intend to keep her long. What do you mean? What I said. I needed someone to sort some things out for me and help with this new experiment. It's very short term. But you can't just hire the poor girl and send her packing within the month. <laughs> I don't see anything poor about Miss Everett. That shows how much you know about girls. She obviously hasn't got a pot to you know what in, or anyone much to care would be my guess. You should have seen the state of her clothes when she arrived, like she's been wearing them for a year. She must be on one of those low-income scholarships, don't you think? None of my business. The point is, I don't care to have a stranger in the house. The quicker it's done, the better. Now, don't go upsetting yourself. I just thought it might be healthy to have someone else in the house. Stella? I won't say another word on the subject. That's just an old folly. It's been empty for years.
Mrs. Dalton has it serviced twice a year. I don't touch it. What the hell is that? Lovely. I don't know what that piece of rubbish is doing in my garage, but I'm going to have a talk with Mrs. Dalton about it. I don't know... Old family portraits. Laura took them down when she moved in. We meant to have them restored, but it never happened. Fine, thanks. What is that piece of junk metal out by the garage? You mean the bike? I saw that. I assumed it belongs to Sam. It's broken down from what I can tell. That explains the state she arrived in. It's a bloody eyesore. Well, since no one ever comes to Dreadhill House, no one will ever see it, will they? Listen. Ring the repair shop in town and have them collect that bike. Tell them to do whatever they must to fix the ugly thing. Why, David, that's generous of you. Can't have the girl getting stuck here, can I? I don't know why I carry my wallet. I hardly ever leave the house. The key to my private lab. Not even Mrs. Dalton is allowed in there. I bought that for the clinic. We never used it. A gold star for Miss Everett. These beds are a tad intimidating, I suppose. I've been down here so long I forget what it might look like to an outsider. These beds are a tad in... There's hours of data here. I don't want to go through it until I have several sessions for comparison. There are more vaults, but they're dark and treacherous. I really should give some of this away to charity. It's just gathering dust down here. There are more vaults, but they're dark and treacherous. Oh, 
Oh, Dr. Styles, there's a package for you. Shall I take it down to the basement? I'll get it. Thank you, Stella. That must be my dialogue generator. presence in the house. It's a scanner. I'll do a session in the tank today, but first I want to collect items from around the house to help me strengthen my memories of Laura. I'm not ready for the tank session yet. I still need to find a sensory item for sight. I still need to find a sensory item for smell. I need to find a sensory item for taste. I need to find a sensory item for touch. What was Laura wearing that night? I need to find an auditory sensory item. We must have been listening to music that night. always preferred dry reds in the evening, but that's all I can say for certain. I don't think that region is quite right. I've decided to, to try to keep Laura with me. For years I've researched the possibility that consciousness or mind is not the same thing as the physical brain. Since Laura's funeral, I swear, I have felt her presence. I've decided to spend several hours a day in the isolation tank visualizing Laura. I don't know what will be the outcome, except probably to indulge my own grief. But if any of her energy remains, then by giving it attention and focus, maybe I can lengthen its influence. Since work no longer interests me, I've decided to make this my work. I will log the results. I've been spending two hours a day in the tank. The results have varied. Sometimes I'm convinced I feel Laura's presence. Other times I'm not able to get past my doubts. I still believe Laura is here. I do. Bergson, the philosopher, believed we choose our own reality. 
If nothing else, I have done that. I'm having new equipment designed that should boost my sessions in the tank. That is all. Laura would be 33 today. Happy birthday, Laura. Happy birthday, darling. Something strange has been happening. There have been several incidents that indicate a presence in the house. The presence of Laura. It sounds insane, I know, but there have been undeniable physical phenomena. Is it possible that through my sessions in the tank, I've given Laura the energy to manifest? I plan to keep a careful record of events as they unfold. And there might be something in the field of psi research that could help. I'll look into it. Laura's presence in the house has continued. I've decided to begin a new experiment to study the effects of imagination. I'll use students as subjects and my fMRI. My hope is to record data on the areas of the brain involved in detailed visualizations. Perhaps using biofeedback, I can train myself to stimulate the same area in my own brain and thus increase the power of my sessions in the tank. This may, in turn, give more energy to Laura. Dr. Ramaskin invented these letter rolls. A random number generator controls the letters, so hypothetically one can create messages using only the mind. Take another look at the instructions in Ramuskin's book before I put this thing together. Good. Now I can get started.
it seems to be correct. There, that's got it. dialogue generator is set correctly. I'm hoping Laura will be able to use it to communicate. I. It's working. Come on, Laura. Talk to me. I'm not sure what Laura's trying to say, if that is indeed Laura. I'm not sure. The dialogue. I'll do a session in the tank today, but first I want to collect items from around the house to help me strengthen my memories of Lord. I wonder how they're faring these days. It's Indonesian. It's supposed to protect the house against bad spirits. That's my old consulting office. There's nothing in there that I want. Looks like that's stocked well enough for the moment. If Mrs. Dalton needs more for incidentals, she'll let me know. She hated me for taking this one, but I couldn't help it. She looked so radiant with joy. Laura and me, she looks wonderful in this one. That was taken on our honeymoon. We spent it in the Loire Valley in France. That's the Gite Rural we lived in, near saint benoit le Fauré. Laura and me at the Assam Reserve, India. Laura at our lake cottage. I wanted to rebuild the memory of a night we went swimming there. I'll take this for a visual cue. so much of Laura. She loved to paint at Timmins Park. Laura's paintings of Timmins Park. Laura's painting. The family china. Laura enjoyed throwing dinner parties. Seems so foreign to me now.
I think I remember what we were playing that night. Now I just have to locate it. Laura loved to work at the dining room table, and she had to have music while she worked. I haven't listened to it since she left. The Vivaldi collection. No, I don't think it was Vivaldi. The Vivaldi collection. Various CD albums. Nothing that I would have listened to that night. The Scarlet Furies. Yes, that's the one we were listening to at the lake. The Scarlet Furies. That's the one we were listening to at the lake. Brightened eyes, my secrets lie not far away. His medals are. <laughs> You still haven't told me what we're doing for my birthday tomorrow. I hope you haven't planned anything epic or embarrassing. It's your birthday tomorrow? Slipped my mind. Mm-hmm. As if you'd miss any opportunity to be devious. She's not here now, but I'm sure Mrs. Dalton saw Laura. That was one of Laura's favorite dresses, but it's not right for the memory I'm focusing on. These are my clothes, nothing to remember from that. She wasn't wearing that on the night I have in mind. This is Laura's bathrobe. She wasn't wearing it that night at the cottage, but her swimsuit should be around here somewhere. Laura and I were drinking wine that night at the lake. But I need to pin down which wine it might have been. We have thousands of bottles here.
That's far too many bottles. I'll have to narrow it down further. There are still too many bottles. Terrific. That narrows it down to three bottles. I can easily taste that many. Shampoo is loaded in the scent filter. First, I need to set up the tank session. Now the CD tray is opened. Everything's set. I'm ready. Brightened eyes, my secrets lie not far away. His medals and his badges doing for my birthday tomorrow. I hope you haven't planned anything epic or embarrassing. It's your birthday tomorrow? It slipped my mind. Mm-hmm. As if you'd miss any opportunity to be devious. Speaking of which, Dad says he'll be joining us for a few days in Venice at Christmas. Won't that be marvelous? I'm glad you talked me into it. It should be so lovely with all the decorations and the ceremonies in the cathedrals. Blue tiles. Blue tiles. Check the cars, David. Check the cars, David.
blue tiles. And yes, there is something odd about this photo. I need to examine this more closely. Laura and me at the Laura and me. It's a scanner. The picture is as good as it's going to get without professional help. What I don't know is what the hell it means. Hello. Everything all right? Fine, thanks. Simon's business card with his phone number. Hello? Inspector, it's David Stiles. You worked on my case car crash in Oxford. Oh, Dr. Stiles. I remember. Your wife. Terrible accident. Yes. Look, I know it was a long time ago, and this is a strange question. Was there anything unusual about the cars? The car that hit us, perhaps, or just anything you remember? Hang on a sec. I'm looking at the file. Listen, what made you call and ask me about it now? I thought I remembered hearing something. I don't remember ever telling you. You were in the hospital and, well, anyway, there was something a bit off. The car that hit you, the gas pedal was fused to the floor, actually melted into it. Thing is, that car didn't burn, crash, not a bit of it. It might explain him running through that give way sign, except how the driver got from his home five miles away to that junction with a gas pedal in that condition is a mystery to me. Dr. Stiles? Thank you. You're right very curious. If there's anything else I can... I'll be in touch.
I am. I? Maybe I'm trying to come through? Do you have something to say to me, Miss Everett? No. Turn that thing off, please. Dr. Stiles, are you sure it's safe after what happened last night? Safe? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? concern himself with fraternity pranks. I still feel as nervous as a virgin on prom night. Settle down. I'm not paying you to chitter-chatter. Lie back and close your eyes. Relax. Sink into the bed. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Tonight, you're at the swimming pool at St. Edmund. Your eyes are closed and you're standing on the rough cement surface next to the pool. You grip and relax your bare feet. Your toes can feel all the tiny bumps and smooth paint of the cement. You smell the chlorine in the air and feel dampness on your skin. When you open your eyes, you will see a pleasant illumination from the lamps reflecting off the water. Get out! Get out! Sam! Something's happened. Get up, come on. What? What are you doing in my room? A few seconds earlier and you'd have caught me dressing. Sorry, I'll uh, wait in the hall. I love that bed. Best bed I ever slept in. I just heard on the radio there was an incident at the pool of St. Edmund Hall last night, and they mentioned another one at Horsepath Track the night before. What happened at the pool? I want you to go over there immediately and find out what happened. Exactly what happened. I want a detailed report. You want me to investigate? Well, I can't go. You'll have to be my eyes and ears, Sam. Okay. Well, what are you waiting for? An engraved invitation? Go! You're up early. Give me two shakes and I'll have your breakfast ready. Can't. I'm off to Oxford right now. At your age, you need a good breakfast. I'll grab something at school. Thanks, though. You're sweet. It looks like another paper was left this morning.
Jeannie Smith is the girl who was at the pool last night. I wonder if she talked to me. Jeannie Smith is a... Hang on there, miss. Over here, please. Hi. You need to show me a student ID before you're allowed anywhere in this building. Oh, okay. Here's my ID. Let's take a look. Helena, that's a beautiful name. Beautiful name, beautiful girl. Thank you. Seems to me we've got another Helena in residence. Let me see. Don't bother. I know her. Red hair, nice girl. Can I go up now? I'm running late. <laughs> Aren't they all? Go up then. Undergrad wing only, though. That way, only grads are allowed up on their side. Oh, all right. There's always a hierarchy, miss. Way of the world, isn't it? time. Helena? Helena? No one's home. Yeah. Hi, Jeannie Smith? Hi, I'm Sam. I heard about what happened last night. I know I don't know you, but I wanted to ask you about the pool, if that's all right. Are you a reporter or something? No, I'm actually worried about a friend of mine. Can I come in? I guess it's all right. You said you were worried about a friend? Yeah. My friend is kind of a well-meaning prankster. I'm worried that this might be his doing. I'm really hoping not, but I wanted to hear more about it. I don't know anything about your friend, but I can tell you this was not a prank. Are you all right? Yes, sorry. Bed looks good. Not as good as my bed at Dreadhill House, but not bad. I'm pretty sure they have some of those in their gymnasium. A jock's room, no doubt. Soccer players, I guess. And swimmers. Someone loves the bulky guys. Soccer players. These dorm rooms are pretty nice. Then again, it's all rich kids here. Can you tell me exactly what happened? I was getting ready to get into the pool. I was putting on my cap and thinking about something else, a paper that's due. Suddenly, the hair on my arm stood up. The air got very dry, almost as if the air was filled with electricity. I looked around, trying to figure out what it was. And then I saw it. In the water. It was awful. How many people were in the pool at the time? Just two girls, swimming. They were already in the water when I got there. I... I yelled at them to get out. Hmm. Did you know them? I've seen them swimming before. Look, they had nothing to do with it. They were as terrified as I was. What did you see in the water? No one believes me. I can't even describe it. Can you try? I'll believe you. There was... It was like a shape under the water. You know how water is displaced when there's something moving through it? Only, there was nothing there. It was a human form, in the water, but it wasn't there. 
God. I know it sounds insane, but it was evil. I felt it. I'll never go near that pool again. I don't even want to be in this building anymore. I want to go home. The shape in the water. Could it have been dye being pumped into the pool? It was dyed purple according to the paper. No, that happened later. I saw the shape go all the way to the far end and then turn around, just like a swimmer doing laps. And then the water slowly changed color. Like this thing, this presence was staining it. I'll never forget it as long as I live. What time did this happen? I left to go down there about 11.30. It wasn't long after that. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I'm sorry, but I really don't want to talk about it anymore. That's cool. Thanks for being honest with me. Listen, it's none of my business, but you mentioned leaving school. Don't do that. Do you know how lucky you are to be going to this school? Seriously? I know you were scared, but I'm sure this was a prank. Even if it was a sophisticated one, it wasn't aimed at you. You just happened to be there. Don't let it ruin an opportunity like this. It's so not worth it. I know you're right. Thanks, truly. I'll see you. Someone is rigging these tricks, and it's starting to piss me off. Well, it's not going to happen again. Tonight's experiment takes place in the gym at St. Edmund Hall. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to catch whoever's doing this. I'm... Hi, this is Sam. St. Edmund Hall Quad, now, Chiquita. Uh, sure. Be right there. I guess they heard. Hey, there's the wench. I vote for drawing and quartering her. Everybody in? Leave Sam alone. We all made our own decisions to join the experiment. Not me. I was played like a fish on a line. Like that would be hard. What do you know about the pool, Sam? I know you shouldn't jump to conclusions. At least not yet. Too late. I'm already deep, deep in conclusion land. It really is too bizarre. For God's sake. Once might have been a coincidence, but twice. It's getting a little frightening. I'm not at all sure we should go back tonight. My mum wouldn't like it. What if we're implicated in these pranks, maybe even expelled? Well, I find it exciting. That is, uh, we might actually be doing something. Besides, Dr. Stiles is counting on us. I want to see what happens next. Uh, I still think drawing and quartering Sam sounds like the best idea. Who's with me? Anyone? Guys, can we not be hasty here? I agree with Angela. Whatever we do, we should do it as a group. But I didn't... Anyway, we don't need to decide right this minute, do we? We have to decide before tonight. We're scheduled to go back there. Yeah. Why don't we meet back here at noon? We can make a decision then. Why not? I have nothing better to do with my time. See ya. Noon. looks normal now. Are these filters the new ones? No, I've just installed the new ones. Those are for the bin. Were these filters in the pool when the water was stained? Yeah. The filters don't have dye stains. Maybe water-soluble dye wouldn't leave a trace. The filters... The sides of the pool are clean. I don't see any residue left by the dye. The side... That looks like a statue I saw in Copenhagen. Sort of. 
clock was stopped at 11.42. That's about when the incident occurred. Nifty trick. I wouldn't want those guys staring at me while I worked out. Flip-flops with socks. He looks more like a German tourist than a pool man. Hi there. I see the pool is back to its usual color today. Yeah? How'd you get the dye out? Well, whatever was in there, I felt was got it out by morning. Did anyone take a sample of the water while it was stained? What for? Um, to analyze it? It don't matter. It's out now. Yeah, that scientific inquiry thing is highly overrated. Did you notice any sign of tampering with the pool controls? Maybe evidence of someone putting something in the input system? No. That's helpful. Thanks. The water was really purple. I think I'll hang on to this. That guy has the curiosity of a meatloaf. I'm not going to get anything out of him. We're going to be visualizing weightlifting tonight in this gym. I need to find a way to rig this place so I can catch this jerk red-handed. The gym closes at 11. I'll get here before then and hide. When they lock up, I'll be inside. should rig something at the doors so that when the perpetrator enters, I'll know it. I'll need to pick up some gear at the Black Wand. Someone's been using that machine and didn't wipe it off. Ooh, kind of gross. Brainiac reference books, no doubt. should rig something at the doors so that when the perpetrator enters, I'll know it. I'll need to pick up some gear at the Black Wand. Those lights are controlled by the switch plate near the door. Good day, Miss Everett. Hi. I need to pay for some items. There you go. Your patronage is appreciated. Good day. Bye.
I bought everything I need to make flash powder traps. Now I just need to assemble them. There. These flash powder traps are ready to go. That'll work nicely. I'll set it up later after the gym closes for the night. There. Now both doors are covered. I think that's everything. If anyone enters this room tonight, the flash powder traps will alert me. I'll turn on the lights and catch him red-handed. Now if I only had a camera, I could get some hard evidence on film. Hi, Mephistopheles. Miss Everett, how kind of you to visit. I need to talk to you about something. Be my guest. I finished the betrayer's price. Did you? Congratulations are in order. You might want to check the box again. One never knows. I'll do that. I need to talk to you about something that's going on with my employer, Dr. Stiles. Yes? He's running an experiment in the basement of Dreadhill House. There are six students, and he has us visualize exercising. It seemed harmless, but then things started getting weird. And I couldn't find any traces of dye at the pool, not even in the filters. But I'm not really worried about the pool. It's the track that's the real challenge. Hmm. Yes. Being a puzzle man, I find it most intriguing. Oh, but it's not a puzzle. I know exactly what's going on. This is someone's grand game. Someone trying to get into the Daedalus Club. Obviously, there's a magician involved. The wind at the track and the shape in the pool were classic misdirects, distracting the witnesses while the lines were painted and the pool was dyed. Naturally. One would think that. Unfortunately, Styles is the perfect victim. He's a recluse and his published articles make it clear that he's a chump for the supernatural. If I got a copy of his experiment plan, anyone could have gotten it. Someone is using it to plot these stunts. If it is a game, it's an original one. Brilliant, in fact. Yes, I guess it is brilliant. Brilliant and awful. Do you know of anyone who might be designing a grand game right now? Maybe someone with ties to Oxford? You must know all the magicians in this area. My dear, the club has members from all over the world and thousands of regular customers. There's always someone running a game. Indeed. A solution occurs to me. You yourself are running the game, and telling me is your way of alerting the Daedalus Club. It's not my game! Pity. I liked that solution. But don't you see? People could get hurt. Dr. Styles for one, but also students. The people who've witnessed these events have been terrified. Oh, but being terrified can be thrilling. It gives one something to talk about in old age. In any case, it doesn't sound like any serious harm has been done. Not yet, anyway. But if it truly isn't your game, then I'd suggest you look at the other students in the experiment. You know what they say. There's always a plant in the house. Of course. Of course, you're right. One of them has to be in on it. Thank you.
21. That did it. It's the Sea Railer Swole Riddle from the Black Wand. Smile for the camera, Samantha. Uh, hi. I knew you were a magician. I was just window shopping. Yeah, right. They have some great stuff in there. I got some fake vomit for a film scene last week. Lucky you. What are you doing here anyway? Were you following me? In your fantasies. Your hot, fevered, sign-me-up fantasies. When do we start? Forget it, Kinderman. And you didn't answer the question. I was just shooting some B-roll. But excuse me for breathing. My mother never did, but that doesn't mean you can't. Hey, check out those eyebrows. Classic. teaching assistant. Really? Was there something you wanted to know about him? No. I think I just found out all I need to know. Thanks. It's a phone list for the department. I should put the neurobiology department phone number into my cell phone directory. I can't put in extensions though, so I'll have to remember the one I want. There. Genuine private life violator. I need to pay for some items. There you go. Your patronage is appreciated. Good day. Bye. the Oxford Neurobiology Department in the Radcliffe Infirmary. If you know the extension you wish to reach, please enter it at this time. Linkweller speaking. Mr. Headley wishes to see you. Immediately. Well, what is it now? Oh, never mind. I'm on my way.
won't have long in here. I need to hurry. Linkweller's phone. Wouldn't I love to be a fly on the wall and overhear his conversations? That should work. Now we'll see what Linkweller's up to. That's a creepy collection. Hi, Angela. Sam. You know about this place too? Oh yeah, it's a great place. Isn't it wonderful? I come here all the time. When I first told you about the experiment, you seemed to know Dr. Stiles. Everyone knows him. But most people have heard those stupid rumors. You didn't seem afraid. Oh no, I've never thought that way about Dr. Stiles. I saw him walking down the street once, and I thought he looked so sad and so handsome. I asked someone who he was and they said, that's Dr. Stiles, the famous neurobiologist. This was before the accident? No, it was after. And that's all you knew about him? I just knew the rumors couldn't be true. Huh. Someone showed me a trick the other day that was really amazing. Do you know any magic? What do you mean? Card tricks, cup tricks, illusions, things like that? <sighs> oh no, that's silly. Excuse me? I like real magic. Like Midsummer Night's Dream. You must know that one if you're in the lit department. Sure. Shakespeare's cool, but I prefer Victorian lit. Anyway, Angela, that's just fiction. It's funny. I was in the lit department before I transferred to nursing. I asked some of my old professors about you, but they've never heard of you. Well, you know, I'm still new here, and I've been keeping a low profile. I sit in the back. I guess that explains it. Why do you like this church so much? It's the Fairy Chapel. Fairies? Not exactly Church of England, are they? She's right there. That's an angel, isn't it? No, it's a fairy. Okay. What are you making? I'm copying the window. Hey, that's good. Very intricate cuts. Where'd you learn to do that? The people on my island have always made paper figures. My father taught me. That island of yours sounds like a happening place. You're lucky. Would you like to have it? God, Angela, you put so much work into it. It relaxes me. And I have lots of them. Are you sure? Thank you. I mean, people don't give me stuff as a rule, so thanks. Sam, are you working for Dr. Stiles? Harvey says that you are. Yeah, I'm staying at Dread Hill. At the house? That's a bad idea, Sam. Why? Oh, uh, people will talk. I don't care. I'm his assistant, that's all. But how did you get that job? He requested someone, and the student employment office sent me over. It's not a big deal, Angela. I know, I... I... It's risky, I mean, with Dr. Stiles' reputation and everything. I hope it works out for you. Thanks. Sam, do you mind if I have some alone time? I need to think about an assignment. Sure. Sorry to interrupt. I'll see you back at the quad later. Okay, I'll see you there. What are you making? I'm copying. Hey, the people that... Would you like... God, it relax. Are you sh... Sam? Yeah, at the house. Why? Oh, I don't know how he would- I know- Thanks. Sam? Sure. Okay, I'll see. She's kind of strange, but I guess that's not so unusual for brainy types. Oxford is probably full of people as out of touch as Angela. It's a paper fairy that Angela made.
Helena, Harvey, Angela, Charles. They all live in this residence hall. Even Malik lives here. Interesting. toilet paper and nail polish. Home manicure, perhaps? I think I'll take a little toilet paper. It's good for hiding things. I'd like to get into Helena's room and poke around, but it's locked. There has to be another way. I'm out. I'm not contributing any more to your tuition today, sir. Your luck was just turning. Forget it. I'll be late for class. Charles, it's me, Sam. Or not. I was wondering if you'd let me in 204. And why would I do that? He borrowed a book from me and I need it back, right away. You want me to break my personal code of ethics for that? <laughs> it won't happen. I'm Charles's girlfriend. I thought I might surprise him. <laughs> You're the third girl this week who claimed to be his girlfriend. How about I let you into my room, huh? And you can surprise me. Mmm. Oh, so tempting. But no thanks. I'm delivering Girl Scout cookies. Oh, yeah? I don't see any cookies. They're really small. <laughs> Those cookies look big enough to me, darling. How about you give me a sample? You're a pig! You're the one who brought it up. He's crying out for a little trickery, but which one should I use? So what's your game? Jin, wanna play? Five pounds a game and no crying to the authorities if you lose. Jin's okay, I guess, but I've got a faster game. That is, unless you can only play Jin. I can beat you with any game invented, sweetheart. What is it? It's called Divide and Conquer. I used to play this game with my brother. He thought he was smarter than I was and could beat me at everything. My mother used a divide and conquer strategy to solve our arguments. Like having my brother divide up a tray of french fries and then I would get to choose which plate I wanted. That's stupid. I just make one plate look like it had more but really put more on the other plate. He tried that, but I'd always get the better of him. Either your brother was a halfway or you're lying. Wanna bet on it? I'll bet 10 pounds each round. If I get the 30 pounds, I win. Okay. Okay, now deal out some cards face up. Anywhere from 5 to 12 cards, your choice.
Damn it! You just obliterated my profit for the week! You have cash? You rigged that game somehow. Too bad you couldn't figure out how. Pay up, please. Wasn't there something else you wanted? Earlier? That's right. I wanted you to let me into Charles's room. Swap? Okay. Nice doing business with you. Yeah, wonderful. This doesn't look anything like Charles, and it's dated just one year ago. Charles's mom's number. I should save her number in my cell phone. It might come in handy someday. There. I put the number in my cell phone memory in case I ever need it. Could Charles Eddington be using someone else's identity? I better take this along as evidence. Mangas, games, DVDs, totally matching Charles's shyness. Mangas. I want to believe. I guess Charles has an interest in sci-fi. It's an issue of Scientific American with an article by Dr. Stiles. But Charles acted like he'd never heard of Dr. Stiles. He sure had me fooled. Charles has more of an interest in Dr. Stiles than he let on. Suspicious much? Nothing of interest in there. That's the bolt of the lock. The lock bolt is controlled by the knob. I think if it's set correctly, the door won't lock when you close it. If I set this correctly, the door won't lock. I don't need to talk to him right now. It's a fuse box. You there, Har? He's not there. Nope, it's locked. Hey! I don't suppose you could let me into room 302. I loaned Harvey Kinderman a camera, and I have to get it back to my AV lab right away. No. Come on. I know you don't normally let people into other people's rooms, but this is urgent. Not to me. He's not going to relent. Damn it. I need to find the right trick.
I can do that trick, but I'll need to get set up for it first. I need to pay for some items. There you go. Your patronage is appreciated. Good day. Bye. Here, that will do nicely. I tucked the help me box into the toilet paper. That should keep anyone from noticing it if they see it lying around. The noisemaker will be disguised by the toilet paper. Good. I don't think that's going to get me anywhere. I don't think that's going to get me anywhere. Keep the door from locking when he leaves the room. Good old Harv is kind of a slob. Hey, I remember this movie. Pretty good one. Harvey's got taste. He's got a lot of gear. I guess Daddy isn't totally against the film thing after all. Or Harvey has his own bank account. What's this? Notes for a new film? A mysterious disfigured scientist. A goth girl named Jimmy. Brain-sucking experiments? Is Kinderman pulling these pranks to stage his film? I'm going to find out. And if he is, I'm going to kill that twerp.
guys. They never let go of toys, right? Hey, I remember this movie. Pretty good one. Harvey's got taste. I have to admit, I didn't even expect to find books in her room. More than meets the eye? I need a camera for tonight, but I don't want to just take it. Helena would probably let me borrow it if I asked. This is definitely Helena's drawer. There's some paperwork about her student enrollment, but nothing about magic or conspiracy that I can see. It's locked. Why would Helena keep a locked box in her own room? Sam, what are you doing in here? I was just... I wanted to talk to you, and the door was open, so I... Uh... Fine. I'm really freaked out about these events on campus. Someone is setting up styles, and I think one of the Lambs Club is involved. So, I'm playing detective. What did you see in here? Nothing. Anyway, you're not exactly at the top of my suspect list. I must be doing something wrong then. Hmm, I might let you live. If you give me the dish on everyone else. Who else have you been snooping on, Sherlock? Do tell and make it good, and preferably nasty. Well... Malik is the grad student of Styles' biggest enemy on campus, a man named Linkweller. I have a feeling he'd stop at nothing to ruin Dr. Styles. Is he? Now that is suspicious. Not to mention rude. I found notes for a new screenplay in Harvey's room. Ten guesses what it's about. Us? Yeah, and the experiment. Tell me that's not suspicious. Was there a description of me? Did he mention my nose? He said it was big, didn't he? Helena! I have a right to know. No, his notes were free of comments on your proboscis. Good. Am I the pretty one? It wasn't all that fleshed out yet. Darling, don't get all worked up. It's bad for your complexion. I found this in Charles's room. Oh my god, this is priceless. It doesn't look anything like him. And the date on the back is just one year ago. I think Charles is an imposter. Please, I recognize the mole on his neck. Lovely mole. Of course, it was a bit less lovely at the time. No one can change that much in a year. Maybe it's a younger brother. If Charles had a record, he wouldn't want to register under his own name. One word, hormones. This is definitely Charles. And if he looked like this a year ago, then he probably really is a virgin. God, I feel faint. Can I keep this? No, I might need it as evidence. Evidence of what? Ugly duckling syndrome? Hmm, what a twist. Angela knew Dr. Stiles before the experiment. I asked her about it, and she said she saw him walking down the street next to the campus one day, after the accident. But that's got to be a lie. 
Styles doesn't come on campus. He won't even leave the house. He's so self-conscious about his face. Maybe she forgot when it was. Maybe. Anyway, that's hardly incriminating evidence. She's too much of an odd bird to be involved with a conspiracy, if you ask me. I noticed you have a camera. Would you mind if I borrowed it, just for a day or two? Take it. I never use it. What's the fun of photographs if you're behind the camera and can't be in them? Thanks. I mean, hello? Hello? Who's there, please? Or not? What the? Mrs. Dalton! Uh oh. What the hell is this doing in my desk drawer? That's Houdini. He has a habit of sort of appearing. He? Who told you you could have a pet in this house? He's in my room. I don't see what difference it makes to you. Well, he's not in your room now, is he? This is my home, Miss Everett, and I don't care to have it smelling like a barn. Houdini does not smell. You could have a herd of buffalo in this house for all the use you get out of it. Shh, 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 shh. Hush now. Oh, my goodness. What a to-do about nothing. I'll take him back upstairs and put him in his cage. Put the thing in the garage. No way! He'll freeze out there. Put him in my room, Mrs. Dalton. Sam. Oh, by the way, who's visiting the house today? What do you mean? I saw a woman on the stairs, just now. Blonde, white dress. You saw no such thing. The, the lighting on those stairs is terrible. I keep asking that something be done about it, but no one pays the slightest attention. Bothering poor Dr. Stiles with nonsense like that. Um... As if pet rabbits weren't enough. Wow, is that menopause? Samantha, tell me what you saw, exactly. There was a woman walking up the stairs when I came in. I called out, but she didn't stop. There is someone here today. What's the big secret? Never mind. It's nothing that concerns you. What did you learn at university? I think I prefer those open just so I have the illusion that I know what's going on. It was nice of Dr. Stiles to spring for the super deluxe lobotomy beds. I better not touch Dr. Stiles' computer. He's not exactly the forgiving type. Dr. Stiles? Yes? The Lambs Club has really worked up. I thought you should know. Lambs Club? Are you planning to put lambs in the parlor now, in addition to rabbits in bedrooms and bats in the belfry? That's what the students in the experiment call themselves. You know, as in lost. Or better yet, sacrificial. God help me. What do you mean, they're worked up? They're freaked about the track and pool incidents. Some of them might not come back. What? What nonsense. What does it have to do with them, I'd like to know? The conditions of the experiment must remain the same. Those students are your responsibility, Samantha. Getting them here is your job, and I expect you to do it. Right. I investigated the incidents at the track and pool. And? Both were obviously staged. There was a whirlwind at the track that was probably created by a helicopter. That got rid of the maintenance guy. Then they painted the track. As for the pool, what the witness saw was this shape or bubble in the pool and then the water changed color. It would have been easy to rig up a hose to blow air into the pool for a spooky effect, as a misdirect, then drop in the dye. Did anyone see or hear a helicopter? No, but there was only one witness, and he had headphones on. Headphones? And did they find dye in the pool? No, but all they cared about was cleaning the pool. 
I don't think anyone even checked. There wasn't any trace of dye around the edges of the pool or in the filters, but it was probably water soluble. And why would someone rent a helicopter and gallons of dye and time these incidents with my experiments, which I might add almost no one knows about? I don't know. No, you wouldn't, would you? Because it's all bollocks. I hope your rationalist bias can be put aside, Samantha, because when I ask you to be my eyes and ears, I expect the facts, not your half-baked opinions. If you can't give me that, you're worse than useless. At least I'm willing to go out there. From what I've seen, your eyes and ears work just fine, mister. What are you, 23, 25? When you've experienced something of life, you can lecture me. I'm sorry. Look, I know what it's like when people... I want your report on the events by tonight, and this time, I want the facts. That is all. Did you know any of the students before the experiment started? No. Why? Just wondering. I don't think the students have any connection to the incidents. You don't? Why? Just do as you're told, Samantha. Yeah, I've always been real good at that. Tell me about you and Dr. Linkweller. I see you've been abusing yourself with gossip, or ancient history, rather. I neither know nor care what Linkweller is up to these days, though I heard he was the keynote speaker at the Göttingen Conference last year, which just goes to show you the discernment of the academic community. Malik works for Linkweller. He's his grad student. Tough luck for Malik. That doesn't worry you? That he might be reporting back to Linkweller? I have better things to worry about than that big bag. I don't have anything to ask him at the moment. This new riddle sounds like it's about Alice in Wonderland. Maybe I'd better check this out. This rabbit mask is whack. They've got pretty cool stuff in here, but I've learned to travel light. Maybe someday I'll have a place to put things. There are subtle letters on those teeth. Maybe they act like a combination lock. But what's the code? That perfect face whose smile to own. Hmm. They've got pretty cool... I remember them from Alice in Wonderland, but I don't know what they have to do with Oxford. A street map of London. I'd really like to have one of those. I'd like to get this map, please. It's five pounds. Thank you. The card says, Alice's long neck in the Wonderland story was inspired by the fire dogs in Christchurch Hall. Hi. I was wondering if you can tell me about some of the locations around Oxford that were used in Alice in Wonderland. Sorry, I only work here. I'm not an expert. There are postcards on the postcard rack for some of the locations. Okay, thanks.
biography of Lewis Carroll. Nothing. Got it. The University Museum. It must be a location in the game. Pieces of gold for Sea Railer Swole. I need to find more pieces. This map will come in handy when I get to London. Not a lot of help there. when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Is that a dog or wolf? Were they ever that big? Unreal. This bench is really thick and comfy. I love that mix of old and new architecture. Goofy looking, but cool. It sucks that it's extinct. The Deedless Club logo. This is a game device. Just borrow this until I figure out how to open it. Man, do I feel stupid. That actually worked! It's a piece of the ideogram. Hogwarts? I guess part of the movie was filmed here. But where on campus? Hogwarts? This must point to a location in Oxford. Maybe someplace used in the film. I wonder where I could get that information. I should put the egg back before I leave. This may sound like a silly question, but do you know of a place called Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in Oxford? That is silly. Hogwarts is a fictional school attended by Harry Potter. Okay, not good. The Harry Potter films were shot on location in Oxford. Really? Where? Numerous sites. You might recognize Christchurch Hall as Hogwarts Dining Hall. 
Wow, you really are helpful. Thank you. I do try. The dining room is closed today for paintings restoration, it seems. I may have to finish this riddle tomorrow. Hi. Wow. Everyone looks so serious. I get that way during the full moon. Some people do the werewolf thing, but I do Walter Cronkite. Well, it feels momentous, doesn't it? We're agreed, right? We're going to vote and we'll all either stay in the experiment or quit. Whatever the group vote decides. One for all and all for one. How do we do it? Should we just raise hands? Silent ballot? Do we need that? Does anyone care? I have a suggestion. I know a great way to vote that's democratic, but allows for an element of fate. Plus, it assures that the vote can't be split. Do tell. I'll write down everyone's vote and we'll put them in a hat. Charles, can we borrow yours? We'll draw one ballot from the hat and that will be the final decision. Interesting. It's good. Chances will favor the more popular answer, but it still allows everyone a shot like drawing straws. Fate. It allows for fate. I like it. Good. Let's start. Charles, quit the experiment or stay. Quit. Helena? Not that it isn't a barrel of laughs, but quit. I vote quit too. I'm sensing a trend here. I vote stay. Stay. And now me. I vote stay. Good thing we're relying on fate. Who wants to pick? I'd like to. May I? Go on. Stay. That's it then. One for all. And all in deep doo-doo. See you tonight. Bye, Sam. See you. See ya. Bye, Sam. Did you rig that, oh great Sam Eeny? It was a split vote. It could have gone either way. I hope you know what you're doing. 